Jewish point of view, where we don't believe in the divinity of Christ. I right. think that the, there you can make an argument that the the Gospels, which were written, he was just signif- a prophet. And, right. signif- no, no, no. We don't I even believe he's a prophet. What do you think he was? What do you guys? I, think I, I mean, I, what I what do I think he was historically? I think he was a Jew who tried to lead a revolt against the Romans and got killed for his trouble, just like a lot of other Jews at that time who were crucified mm-hmm. for trying to lead revolts against the Roman and got killed for their trouble. When it comes to the distinctions between Judaism and Christianity, as a Jew, whenever I hear pastors speak about Christianity, very often I think to myself. Right, all that stuff's in the Old Testament. For me, it's about accepting responsibility for my own sins on myself, and I don't have the ability to say that there is the, the suffering servant, the suffering Lamb of God, who sacrificed himself to relieve me of my sins, mm-hmm. and therefore give me a fair shot at life. Do you think there he was, was resurrected? A, no, that's not, that's not a, a Jewish belief. Okay, I just want to check. Yeah, no, we're, we're not into, <laughs> You're not we're into, not into miracle stories. No, that's, that's no? Not, no. You don't have any miracles? No, not, not, not by Jesus. The, this, this narrative has some, some holes in sort of Jewish philosophy. In the Gospels, Jesus' vision of himself as the Messiah is completely different from the prior vision of what the Jewish Messiah is and is actually outside the scope of how Jews describe the Messiah or really have ever described the Messiah. The Messiah in Judaism has always been a political figure who is destined to do certain things, restoring the kingdom of Israel, uh, re- maintaining control of that kingdom, uh, bringing more Jews back to Israel. All of these things are considered sort of political things that the Messiah does. As much as we all appreciate Ben Shapiro for his oftentimes spot on political commentary, make no mistake about it, Ben Shapiro is not a fan of Jesus Christ. That is why it was a bit perplexing that Ben spoke rather effusively about the Christian Asbury revival. People need that in their lives. People want to feel that feeling of belonging, a feeling of higher purpose, and a feeling they're part of something bigger than themselves. When that is oriented towards something proper, like a relationship with God, a God who calls on you to be moral and good toward your fellow man, that is an amazing, amazing thing. What I'm hoping is that what's happening in Asbury is the forerunner to a broader religious revival. Perhaps we shouldn't be saying, cool, Ben's closer to believing in Jesus. Instead, we should be saying, something's a bit off here. Either Ben didn't watch enough of the Asbury revival to get offended, or there was nothing offensive spoken at Asbury that would cause an Orthodox Jew to either get saved or be mad as a hornet. When Jesus informed the Jews of his day he was God, they wanted to kill him. When Peter preached to the Jews at Pentecost, 3,000 of them got saved. And then, of course, there's Stephen, his preaching. It was all about Jesus, the righteous one, and the result was not a hearty affirmation of revival. It is an amazing, amazing thing, and the footage from the Asbury Revival is incredible. And there is something euphoric about worshiping with tens of thousands of other people. Ben's effusive reaction over Asbury, it may well have been due to a lack of research, or it was due to a lack of robust preaching about Jesus. Discuss. Our circumstances can be challenging and difficult, but I do want to maximize Christ as being our hope, and Christ is the one that ultimately gives us stability. 